Hey, Mike DeHarbo, the New York Times is reporting right now that it was Carter Page's intriguing trip to Moscow last summer that first aroused the Bureau's suspicions that the Trump campaign might have been coordinating with the Kremlin during the 2016 campaign. According to the Times, quote, that trip last July was a catalyst for the FBI investigation into connections between Russia and President Trump's campaign, according to current and former law enforcement and intelligence officials. In the months that followed, they said more evidence came to light, including intercepts of Russian officials discussing Mr. Page and other Trump associates. Well, Page's visit to Moscow was days before he and other campaign associates chatted away with the Russian ambassador out in Cleveland at the convention. That's also when the language of the Republican Party platform was eased over, well, was eased over U.S. sanctions on Russia. We also know that the Trump campaign had approved Page's trip to Moscow, according to Politico. In this file, CNN's report this week that the FBI used the Christopher Steele dossier, that's the MI6 guy, to obtain a FISA warrant on Page. Officials say that means investigators may have independently corroborated parts of the dossier. That's news. Joining me right now is Democratic Congressman David Cicilline of Rhode Island, who sits on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and MSNBC political analyst David Korn, Washington Bureau Chief of Mother Jones. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Do you have information My on pleasure. this? beyond us that you can't tell us about? Because I'm curious. I want to uh, learn more. No, I don't. Although I think if you look at all of the evidence that we do have, uh, there are a series of events that are pretty suspicious. Here is Carter Page. He goes to Moscow. He comes back, goes to the Republican National Convention. The only thing they change in the party platform is a pro-Russia policy as it relates to Ukraine. Shortly after he returns back to the United States, the WikiLeaks begins the release of, of uh, the emails from the D stolen from the DNC. Uh, and then you have Carter Page, who's changed his story. First, he said, uh, no, I'd never met Ambassador Kislyak at the convention. Then he acknowledged to your own Chris Hayes, he did. Then he said, we never talked about sanctions. And then he admitted in a subsequent interview, well, maybe we did talk about sanctions. So you have a changing story, some very suspicious behavior. This is the foreign policy advisor to the presidential candidate. And it's a reason we need to That's get to the bottom of this. You're right, Congressman. That's what yeah, Trump he calls was. somebody Absolutely. back when he admitted That's he right. existed. Anyway, the Times reports that it is unclear exactly what about Mr. Page's visit drew the FBI's interest. Meetings he had during his three days in Moscow intercepted communications of Russian officials speaking about him or something else. When asked about his trip to Moscow last week, Page couldn't seem to get his story straight. First, he told CNN he did not discuss the lifting of U.S. sanctions on Russia with anyone in Moscow. Let's watch. Did you ever talk with anyone there about maybe President Trump, if he were elected, then candidate Trump, would be willing to get rid of the sanctions? Never any direct conversation such as that. I mean, it, look, it, it's... What do you mean direct conversation? What, what, I don't know what that means, direct conversation. Well, I, I'm just saying, no, that was never, never said, no. But then in a subsequent interview, he didn't appear so sure. It sounds like from what you're saying, it's possible that you may have discussed the easing of sanctions. Something may have come up in a conversation. I have no recollection, and there is nothing specifically that I would have done that would have given people that impression, George. But you can't say without, uh, without equivocation that you didn't discuss the easing of sanctions. Someone may have brought it up. I have no recollection. And if it was, it was not something I was offering or someone was, that someone was asking for. You know, I don't know whether he, he talks like he's been lawyered up or not, or he's just a little ditzy, but the guy seems to want attention. The way he answers questions on television is a guy that wants to be intriguing. Well, he's kind, What's he up to? He comes across as squirrely, and then yeah. his answers are kind of evasive, nothing but like that, such as I didn't whatever have a direct you, com What's you know, a direct com yeah, What's an yeah. indirect conversation? And, 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 so, and whether he's doing that purposefully, whether that's just the way he talks and speaks, it's hard to know. He's like you a know, fan but dancer you, in a burlesque yeah, show. To me, he the wants most, you to focus on him, but he wants to tease you away from it the whole time. And, and, it's and, weird. And, and, and if he was doing it, working for the Trump campaign or the Russians or cooperating with the FBI, yeah. none of them would want him to do this. You know, the most intriguing thing you just read in that, in that little excerpt from the New York Times was when it said, and other Trump associates. Yeah. So we're focusing on Carter Page. His name seems to be front and center. You think he's a, but you think he's a decoy duck? I'm not sure he's a decoy duck, but the fact that there are others yeah. who they were looking at who might have been more central or more important and maybe are not, are not running to the cameras at the moment. Nope. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.